is the Greek text that stands behind the King James translation done in the year 1611? It's what we call the Textus Receptus, or the Received Text, a title that was given to this Greek New Testament in the 1600s as that text which has been received by everyone. That was mostly a publisher's blurb, but the title has stuck. Well, this text originated with Erasmus of Rotterdam, a humanist scholar who was a Roman Catholic priest and very close to the ideas of the Reformation. He also became the greatest Western European scholar of ancient Greek in the 16th century. Now, the story goes all the way back to 1453 and May 29th, which was a Tuesday. On that day, the Muslim invaders finally broke through the walls of Constantinople, Byzantium, and uh, took over the city after laying a siege to the city for several months. Uh, scribes took their Greek manuscripts and fled in, into Western Europe. And the Reformation and the Renaissance were born because of this renewed knowledge of the ancient Greek texts. Five years later, the University of Paris offered a course on ancient Greek, which was the first time in modern times that any university had offered a course on Greek. In the year after the invasion of Byzantium, the printing press was invented by Johann Gutenberg in the city of Mainz, Germany. So 1454-1453, two world-shaking events took place that affected Western Europe and the rest of the world significantly. Then in 1516, on March 1st, the first published Greek New Testament came into being, published, that is, published on a printing press. And this was done by Erasmus, the Catholic scholar from Holland. Now, Erasmus was hurrying to get this text published because he knew others were working on one as well, and consequently he wanted to get this to the publisher as soon as possible so he could be the one to get the first one out there. And his was indeed the first Greek New Testament published, but it wasn't the first one printed. There was another one in Spain that was printed in 1514, but for reasons that are still somewhat of a mystery to us, it was not published until 1522. 800 copies were made. They were kept in store until uh, they got a papal imprimatur that allowed them to get this thing published. So Erasmus's text was the first to get published, though it wasn't the first Greek New Testament to be printed. And it came out on March 1st, 1516. He eventually published four more editions, and all five of these editions had Greek on one side, Latin on the other. His objective really was to show that his Greek New Testament, or that his Latin translation, was just as good, if not better, than Jerome's in that it was really reflective of the Greek text. And so that's why he had this diglot of Greek and Latin in there as well. Now, in the first edition, he published his text, based it on about half a dozen manuscripts, the oldest of which were from the 12th century, so only about 500 years earlier than uh, when he had actually done his work. When he did his second edition, there was an outcry from the church where they said, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, there is here the, the Trinitarian formula that you have left out of your translation, where it says, uh, there are three who bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and, and the Spirit, and these three are one, and that was not in Erasmus's text. What he said was, I didn't put it into my Greek New Testament because I did not see any manuscripts that had it. He did not make a promise that he would put it in, but he did say, I didn't put it in because I didn't have manuscript testimony. Now, this was a little bit artificial and not entirely uh, genuine on his part because in his first edition, when he came to the last leaf of the book of Revelation, he came to the last six verses. And when he got to those six verses, he did not have a Greek manuscript. So he had to back translate from Latin into Greek, and thereby he created 17 textual variants that were not attested in any other Greek manuscripts until one was made that was a copy of Erasmus's Greek text at that point. So in his third edition, there was a Greek New Testament that was apparently made to order by someone named Roy or Freud, working at Oxford in the year 1520, and Erasmus came across this manuscript, and he incorporated the Trinitarian formula at 1 John 5-7 in his third edition of 1522. 
And that's how the Trinitarian formula, also known as the Kama Johannium, has gotten into the King James Bible, while most translations, modern translations, all of them, except for the New King James Bible, do not have that wording. It is found only in nine manuscripts. Uh, all of these are late. Uh, it's either in the text of these manuscripts, no earlier than about the 14th century, or it's in the marginal notes. And the earliest manuscript comes from the 10th or 11th century, but the marginal note is uh, written significantly after that fact. So here we have a text that Erasmus produced, which has been called the most poorly edited book in the history of publishing, that has the last leaf of Revelation back translated from Latin into Greek because he didn't have a manuscript that was in Greek that could uh, fill out the book of Revelation. And he adds the wording of the Trinitarian formula at 1 John 5, 7 from a manuscript because of pressure from the church to put this into his text. This is the Textus Receptus that stands behind the King James Bible. And yet, remarkably, it differs from other manuscripts, in fact, older manuscripts, significantly older manuscripts, a more reliable text, only in about 5,000 places, the vast bulk of which are rather minor, although there are some places that are somewhat significant.